Hello, everybody. The, the workshop is starting now. So we have, I think, half an hour or something more. Um, I would like to introduce me. My name is Michael Grafneder, and my colleague. My name is Mike, Michael uh, Grafneder, and my colleague Hannes Boran is here. Uh, it's the, the workshop is planned as a hands on, so. It was planned that you are doing the same as I'm doing, so really c do some coding. I mean, it's the best to get some practice on it. And so if you're just sitting around, you probably will get a little bored because, but maybe it's uh, enough for you to get some impressions about the Android development. Um, so we both are, Android developers at Tailored Apps. We are a small company developing iPhone, Android, and mobile app, mobile web apps. So um, both are uh, alumni of this university. Um, the agenda is some basic setups, how to, how to code, how to debug, how to do a uh, few the logs. Then we go on some basic principles uh, about the life cycle, you have something you have to know, then you will get an impression um, how to do the layouts, what kind of views you can use, how do you how to arrange them. We can we use toasts, we use the dialogues, menus and the action bar. So how many of you uh, have developed an Android app? Okay, so I'm not sure if this is the right workshop for you, <laughs> but we will see. Um, the requirements uh, for the workshop, you should code in Java. You should, if you're using a computer, you should have already installed or installed now. Uh, the latest Java version, or better, Ch JDK 6, which is supposed uh, um, preferred by Google. You um, the latest Eclipse with the Java development tools, the Android development kit, which which is downloadable from the Android.com site, and the plugins for Eclipse. And for testing the real app, it's, you, we usually use the devices, the real hardware, and but you can also use the emulator, but it, the emulator is slow, so. Um, for testing and debugging, so if you um, set up the, the connect, so who, who is now doing some Practicing. I mean, so okay. Have you installed the software? Do you have um, tried to connect the device? And have you ha have you got a connection? Okay. So if you are if you see the device in the devices in Eclipse, it should be fine. Okay. So basically. Um, if you're a Windows user, you have to install the tr drivers and on Ubuntu, for instance, you have to set up some uh, rules to uh, enable the USB devices, but that's covered on the page here. So you have to copy, it, uh, copy and paste uh, the rules in some files. Um, if, you if you want to see what's going on while you while you're coding and you <coughs> run the, the app, there is one important um, view in Eclipse. That's the log cat. Um, you, ca uh, you can either use the Eclipse view called log cat, log cat or you, you can open um, a, t a terminal, which is somehow better because if you do that, you can see that you, you, have, you can get, get a lot of information and 
you won't be uh, focused on this little view, which is this, and you have to. Yeah. So there's l not much information on a l on this small screen. So but you you should uh, open a, a terminal uh, and work with that. Um, to do some logging for your own in your app, um, there are some uh, log log methods from Verbose Debug. If you are familiar famili familiar with uh, Log4j, you should be fine. So just use the methods. They they are static and uh, yeah can you uh, either into the string or an exception and and there is the one what the fuck what what the hell what what the failure what the failure okay so the, uh, some words about the emulator um, it's slow so it takes a while to start the emulator the usage is usually usually not that responsive so we prefer real devices and um, be because the devices are faster, but also that there are some bugs in real devices. For instance, Samsung has some something done in their in their devices, and if you uh, do, do if you never try it on a real device, you will never see this misbehavior. So. Um, it's better to use the real devices, but it can be useful to use an emulator if you want to see different screen sizes and you want to see how your layout will um, look like on these devices. And it can be also useful if you don't have a real device. For instance, you want to develop a really mono tablet and you don't have a tablet. So, um, so the practice is uh, you cannot really test on all devices in the market because <coughs> there are hundreds of devices. So we test on the edge cases, so a small, very small device, a tablet device, pop, very popular devices, and it should be fine. So um, <coughs> I have created a demo project. Um, so if you want to do some practice, just uh, start with a new project. There's a, a wizard, so we can do it. Just try a new Android application project, and this will guide you through the, the creation of a project. Here is the main, the most important part is the package name because the package name will later used in the Google Play Store. So it must be unique. So we usually use our domain name. It's uh, the same convention as the Java package names. And the first two. And so name. OK, just for demo. So. And here it offers a, uh, an icon to create an icon. It can skip. And yeah, usually you will get a, a, a first activity called main activity. And with that activity, so, so that's the first um, screen. You all, all you already get uh, a few in it, and you can just say run. So where is it? Run s. So this was the demo. Oh. So where was this kind of? How was how was the name name two? <laughs> okay. So I just say run s Android application. And where is the emulator here? Emulator. Hello world. So not really 
exciting, but it's easy to start. From here, you can use already the, the layout editor, graphical layout, or the XML. You have already uh, some class, you have methods to implement, so that's the way to start. Um, so we have already seen some source code in the source folder and um, there are some already a, a layout file. So the, the layouts in Android are defined in XML. You can use this uh, graphical uh, layout um, tool to, um, to arrange your, your, um, your widget, your, your views. Uh, but you, you can. Uh, but I, I would prefer that um, to use the XML editor to do some fine tuning. It's it's not that. Yeah, not that not that easy to use like the iOS e equivalent. So, and then there are the drawables icons. <coughs> Um, in the folder as drawable and something, we will come to that later. So that's the main uh, structure. So, and there is one file in the, in the root folder of the app, um, the Android manifest XML. So here you can see some, ba some information about versioning. You can, uh, you do Every time you release an app to the Play Store, you have to increase your build number. So it is important <coughs> to increase that if you release. Um, you can define which um, version of Android you require. So if you nowadays want, uh, I don't know, what's 2.2 or 2.3, depending on your your how many um, devices you want, want to run on. You, s you can uh, define these uh, versions here in the min SDK version. So if you want to run on 2.2 devices, you can see that's the equivalent of eight in the integer numbering of the levels. So this defines uh, which devices are offered the app. So if you just say, oh, I only want to run on the latest ice cream sandwich and say, I want to run on four, four dots X, then it will not, no devices with 2.X will get the app in the Play Store. Another important um, um, property is the target SDK version. Sometimes the the system, the device will do something different. It will maybe if you have a low n number here and the device is higher, it will behave like the old device. So it will emulate somehow behave similar. So if, for instance, the new um, action bar has you have you will on the new devices you have no no uh, menu button, and so you can say. If it's targeted for an old version, you would expect there is a menu button because before there were always a menu button, so the device is offering you a small menu button like in the button. So that's important to know. Um, then there are, this, there are the, the activities, so the screens that you want to have um, running. And it's important to know that you have to um, define them here because otherwise it will crash, uh, crashes without them at the runtime. So you will get, yeah, if you see the, the, the exception you will know, but yeah, if you create the activity you should always register it here. And there's also uh, the permissions are some important, especially for the, the app users, they want to know which um, permissions you require and so you can um, all kind of permissions um, require so 
the most important usually is the internet permission because without the internet permission you cannot do that any, any, not much um, and the problem is if you don't have this permission and you start the app and say oh connect me to the server it just says yeah no route to host or any other internet is down something like that and uh, oops. and yeah you, you guess huh? what? why is my internet I don't know the WLAN is working no so good to know to to check that um, so the resources name are only lower cases numbers and underscore names no underscores no spaces and no uppercase and so this, uh, yeah Eclipse will tell you that it's not allowed um, there is an interesting um, tool called hierarchy viewer if you d um, test your device uh, your uh, I'll tell you so where is it so hierarchy viewer um, for instance, there is this. Yeah. If you um, develop something and you design your layout, and later you you think, oh, there's something wrong, and I don't know how it is arranged, you can um, have a look. For instance, at this basic um, demo, and you see there is a frame layout linear layout, we will come to the layout later, but I want to show you that, whoops, you can see, show extras, you can see it here, okay, on the right side, it should be better here, so, so you can check, that's, that's the actor, the, the, the app running in the emulator, and you can see all the the properties, if it is <coughs> reset, is it is so if it is a white, how is the width, and so you can see what's the parent of the views. So I want to just show you that there are some to which tools you have to develop. So okay, and there are other tools. You should you should uh, see before. So I have already s talked about the devices view in Eclipse. So here you can see the, the emulator, and there is the this kind of uh, uh, here are the two apps. So the the new one and the other. and you can do some memory profiling here. Uh, and some performance uh, uh, with this method profiling. So if you have later problems with memory usage or performance problems, you can use this methods to invoke uh, this kind of uh, analysi analysis. Yeah. And you can stop the process and you can make a screenshot. So that's the basics and you can also transfer files uh, from the device to your local computer or back if you want to examine some files on the device so you can download it and so so that uh, I think the most important tools so I've already I think mentioned now that so debugging, profiling, locket, file transfer, and there is another view where you can change the uh, the emulator. So you can say you can change the network speed. Maybe you want to try to use your app like you would use it on a very slow internet connection, or if you want to fake <coughs> the location of the device. So if you want to change the location to uh, another, another town. So, um, the layout. Um, there are a few layouts <coughs> to arrange. Bas the basic 
linear layout is just either horizontal or uh, vertical. Um, the, frame, the relative layout posi um, place, uh, positions the views uh, relatively to each other. So you can say one on the top, one uh, uh, below, and another one below of this, and one right of this. Um, the frame layout is just framed, frames um, on each other. So they are, uh, if they are transparent, you can see the other one behind. Um, the grid layout, table layout is a uh, table, yeah, rows and columns. And the grid layout is, or the grid view, which is basically the same. You have items and they are arranged in this way of kind. So uh, the layouts are always in REST layout, or you can also define some, um, yeah, so it's just, if you, for instance, if you have a, a layout called name.xml, you have to, it will generate an integer ID which you can reference in the source. So that's our layout.name. So, um, so, and you use it like this in the, in the method for cr uh, creating the activity. You set, you, you connect the, the layout to the view, uh, to the, as the content and inflate the XML or, or you inflate the XML either of this and, and then you can find the views within the layout with the corresponding IDs which you have to find also in the XML and then you can um, work with that, with that. So I would like to show you um, uh, how it would like, uh, how, how, it, how it would look like. For instance, um, I have done some basic uh, layout. So if you want to uh, try this now, just open the layout activity main XML that should be in all of your uh, of all the in the project already and so it's a little bit small okay so for instance I have just add a text view that's a label a label is called text view so you can just drag and drop text views here and here. Um, I have add a button already here. And I have a, um, an input field called edit text. And if you check it in the XML, I have here add an ID for this. So that's called activity main edit, and the button is called activity main button. So I just have an edit text that can, where you can add the text, and a button where you can press on, I can click on it. So that's the main uh, uh, layer. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who wanted to attend the Go Web Start Framework talk, it will begin shortly in the other room. So if you want to change, then now is the time. And yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, um, yeah, I think so. Sure, yeah. So for I have, as I have shown you, you can set, set, set content view, so you connect this view, that, that, this view to this activity, and then you find the edit text the input here, assign it to a variable, member variable, the same with the button, and then you can um, add and, and click listener 
with, with a set on click listener method and in the on click method you can do some stuff what do you want in this ca in this um, method for instance um, I set some settings I show a toast and I start another activity so maybe I should go back to the so um, okay yes. so that was the basic idea without the other stuff that I've already done so here I show a toast a toast is maybe I should go to the toast toast a toast is a small um, notification at the bottom of the screen it's very handy if you just want to say oh something has happened but yeah you cannot do anything it's just to let you know something that maybe you know whatever um, and it has very um, easy um, syntax, just say make text and how long you want to show the text short is what, how many seconds? a few seconds and long is a few seconds more and just say show and you will get the message so that was the idea if you um, use this uh, code So okay, so show toast. Okay, there's not much too much. So I enter here some text. Da -da -da. Whatever. Okay, and the show toast will show the text. Okay, so that's the text view, the edit text, and the button. So that's the main, the, the basic uh, widgets you um, you use to um, work. Another one is the scroll view. So if you have a lot of um, views and they are not uh, suitable for one screen, we can scroll. But you have to um, um, use a scroll view and put them in within the scroll view. So um, it's just a kind of container that scrolls and for instance, yeah. For it, for instance, the whoops, the list view, or the expanded list view, or the web view, are already containers. So, um, if you have a <coughs> list view, that does it automatically for you. Uh, on the on the downside, you cannot use uh, a list view within a scroll view, but because if you have two scrolling containers, they will. Yeah, it will not work. It will just behave very strange. So um, maybe I can show you just a, that's that's a that's a list. Do I have enough? No, I don't have enough. Okay. Okay, I will come to that later. So the graphical editor, editor, editor. Um, I can show you some other widgets. Um, yeah, I mean, you can uh, also check uh, on the on the developer side if you want to. I don't know. Do you want to see a list of all the widgets? I mean, or I don't know. There is there's there's there in the last months the the training material has really improved. So. We have now on developerandroid.com a really good 
training section, advanced training section, API guides, about all stuff. So that's really um, has, has improved a lot since the since the last years. So I, and there is um, the design section for all Android developers. They are not that familiar with design. You can see um, about the where are the kind of building blocks. Yeah. So you can see what you can use for your own um, okay. so there are the list the so I have all this there are buttons you can design you can um, style the buttons as you like, you can change the color, the, the bit, and so on. Text fields you already have, the seek bars to have some uh, configuration for instance. So you have uh, pickers, they are handy for changing uh, the date or the time. So date and time pickers are already uh, ready to use. Just say open the time picker and so <coughs> that's the so okay. Um, so something about the graphical editor. So it has improved. Um, you can use it to lay out basic UIs, and um, it always you always have one-to-one -one translation between the graphical view and the XML. So if you do something in the graphical editor, it always will reflect immediately in the XML and in the other direction. The only downside is sometimes that the graphical editor cannot display it properly, or but if you can use the XML editing, it's, it's quite good because you have code completion in the XML. So you can, for instance, if you have a layout and you want to add something like gravity here, how to position that, you have, you get the you get suggestions which attributes can use, for instance here the layout gravity, you get an, a preview, you get a, a documentation about it, so you can use it and you can here yeah, code completion to get also the values, so you can for instance for here the gravity say oh yeah please center the text view, so if you save and you go back to the graphical editor, it's centered, yeah. And you can, for instance, say right, and it's on the right side. So, uh, use the graphical layout as long as it fits to you. If you have problems and it's you need more fine tuning, you can also always use the XML if you are more familiar with that. Um, so I would like to say something about the screen sizes and density because it's important to know that if you are if you're developing for hundreds of devices you cannot always rely on the fixed positioning of the buttons and the, the layouts and everything. So you have to be flexible. And there are two kind of um, dimensions, uh, yeah, kind of ranges. There is one for the density. <coughs> um, there is, it starts with the baseline, uh, the MTPI. That's, that was, that was the, <coughs> the, the 
that the basic uh, density is, that means 160 dots per inch. So that's the same like the iPhone. And if you, and then there is the high TPE, which means it has one top five times the density, uh, many dots per inch. And X, uh, HDPI is the, the twice. That's, for instance, the Galaxy Nexus. Also, and that's the same, if you compare it to the iPhone, that's the, the Retina display. That's 300 something. So, um, if you have drawables, then um, the, the device will automatically um, convert the, the, the image to the, to the resolution of the device, so to the density of the device. And so if you have uh, an image that is 100 pixels uh, and 100 pixels on the height, um, and the, you, you store it in the Galaxy Nexus, it's like XHD, X, <laughs> HTPI, and you use it on an, an old, for instance, on a tablet, it will uh, automatically uh, transform it to 50 times 50, because the, <coughs> the density is lower, and uh, so it means that the no, other way around. So it's it will always have the same physical size on the device. So it's always in centimeters the same, approximately. Um, there are also some kind of um, categories for sizes of the real device. So, so there was, from the beginning, were small, medium, large, x large, and usually you say x large, that's tablets, or large is something between two big tablets, but from the, from Honeycomb to 3.2, there are better ways to to create modified layouts for tablets, so or specific screen sizes. Yep. There's one preferred the S W something <coughs> um, dot dot per inch. Uh, no, device independent pixels. Powerful name. Um, so it means um, if the smallest uh, width of one um, that um, one uh, dimension is bigger, so it means, for instance, if you want to have 600 pixels because your layout is, for instance, if you have, okay, go to the, the fragments, for instance, if you have a, a form with 320 pixels and, and you want to have a different layout when you have 1000 pixels, you can say, oh yeah, this layout will fit if I have more than, I don't know, 600 pixels. So you can uh, define your own layout for bigger uh, screens. So, and, uh, so this means, uh, um, this means for the, if you have a, um, 16 to 9 uh, device, so it's always the, the 9 part, also the smaller part of the device. Yeah. So, go to host, we have um, menus. Uh, menus, okay. Um, menus, so are you with me now? So, what? Okay. Um, the menu was is also XML based. Um, for instance, there's already one in the ba basic uh, sample. You just have an, an idea. You have an idea. You have a title. So that's the name. 
and you have uh, yeah that's so that's it's already working so for instance if you say your menu so you get it here settings so that's uh, the menu button um, you have to use it like this the same way as the as the, the layout you say you can so you have a menu inflator that uses that uh, you, you can define the, the, lay, the menu. So the menu is here. So it has our menu activity main, and you have to override this method on create option menu, and it will automatically uh, inflate the XML layout and show it to you. If you want to react on the on the select on the click you say on app on option item selected and then you check the ID of the the menu. So that's menu settings and you return through so that is uh, you handle the event and you can do something like I have s you have sh seen before you say a toast make text uh, this so toast text bool toast text and Toast punct long and show it. So, so yeah. So menus are in fact very simple to implement. And so, so what you see here is, for instance, um, the menu like you see on the two point x device so it's an old menu if you, so we can maybe just close the, this emulator and start another one uh, yep with ice cream sandwich so so we have a okay so this will take a while Okay, um, yeah, okay then. So, that takes long. Yep. Uh, do you think it makes sense these days to develop with the x86 uh, an emulator? Because I think the performance may be way better because there's no emulation. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just a bonus question. Yeah. Uh, I've t uh, heard that with the if you use the X um, 86 emulator, it's much faster and so. Um, and the Intel has some done some optimization. I've heard also on Ubuntu. Unfortunately, it's not really faster. <laughs> it's fun. for me. It's faster. Yeah. It's faster now. Okay. On okay, it's faster. faster. Huh? Uh, on the Mac, it's also it's also very really faster than right. the ARM. But there are only some versions. I think 4.0 and 3, 2.3 or so. So you can't test every version with the x86 yeah, but emulator. Yeah, from 4.1, I think 4.1 is also available. Yeah, but not all. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Of course, it's better, yeah. So, okay, let's try it on the, this emulator. That's an ice cream sandwich emulator. And if you want to use the action bar, that's already now activated, and the menu show as action. 
Never. Okay, that's wrong. I want. We want to. Okay. So here, I have the old menu. So it's not. The settings is an available with the menu button and settings. Yeah. So if you want to use it in the action bar, you say always, for instance, and this makes. Is it with an action bar? Is it an action bar? This app? <laughs> yeah, here it is. So that's the new way. So it's the same. It's a menu here. Uh, and it's now within the, the action bar <coughs> without any configuration. So if you uh, just want to do use the action bar on the forward of something of or no stroke upwards from three point something you just can use this kind of method to uh, show menu points menu items in the action bar and and if you want to use it before you have to use action bar Sherlock that's an, a library to get the support for all the devices, but um, yeah, it's ba it's basically the same. You just have to use one or two other methods, but that's not really uh, complicated. So, what I want to show you now is <coughs> a, a list. Um, lists are very common in apps to show some information to the user and so um, fragments text no worries where's the list yeah. okay okay good So, um, I have uh, created an activity for demonstrating the usage of a list. Um, you can use uh, this kind of list activity, but it will do something for you to simplify the list usage, but it, it's not really necessary, especially if you um, use something like uh, f fragment activities or Sherlock fragment Sherlock uh, action, uh, the action bar Sherlock action bar Sherlock. So you have to um, extend from there um, activities, and so. It's, so that's the basic way um, of um, creating a list. You have the same. Um, you have uh, an XML layout. Here is it. Is it a list view? I just have. I have dropped uh, here the list here into the the view and change the, the ID to, to get it here. So basically I, I set the layout, I find the view and add an ad adapter. So there are a few uh, adapters available. You can uh, uh, implement the interfaces, use the base adapters, the abstract classes or use an um, uh, handy to use adapter like the array adapter which accepts uh, a list or an array of <coughs> objects and so the constructor just accepts um, a layout so you can um, I, want, uh, yeah, I want to show you the basic example where is it? This. 
Yeah, it's, it's more basic. So, okay, maybe I should format it better. Okay, so there is a layout for the, the items in the list, and there is a predefined there are predefined uh, layouts in the Android SDK already. So there are a simple list item one and two. So list item one means just one text view, that's one line, or if you want. Uh, two lines with a subtitle, something like that, which is shown in the layout. If you see here, that that would be a, a line, also item two, because it has one, one item and a sub item. So that's one one possible layout to uh, how it would look like this item. So that's basic and. You have to define in this in this uh, situation because the array adapter ex uses this kind of ID to to uh, set the text of this text view. So there's in this I, in this layout you can s check this layout if you have connected the source code or the co code. So that's already defined in Android. So that's um, simple text view with the ID of Android ID text one. So you can use this already defined uh, layout uh, here and uh, insert the string array with the, with the text. So you s then you uh, set an adapter to the, the list and you can um, set an, a click, an item click listener, which is very similar to the, the click listener, except that it uh, has a, a small, an, an, another interface. It's not on clicks, and it's on item click with another, with other parameters. So um, here you have nothing to do more than just connect the adapter with the list and if you uh, would run the so okay so where is it now Okay, ah, yeah, here's the. So that's the list with the items, one line items, and if you click on one, oh, okay, yeah. So it does something, it does not do it. okay. Uh, and then you want to change the layout of the, the item because usually you want to only say a name, so you want to show some more information about the specific person or something like that. So, I, where is it? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, here I have changed create. Uh, yeah, here I have created a custom layout for the items. So I have a medium text, a large text, and a smaller text for one item. So that's just three text views with different IDs: medium, large, and small. And I can now use them here. So I said I changed the layout to this, the one I have created. 
Uh, and so, and I can now overwrite a method called get few. This uh, get few um, it should return the layout. So you can either use the the one which is already created here now from the from the array adapter, but you could also uh, say get layout inflator in uh, your own. I mean, yeah, so you could also do this, and you also get a, f a few. So you can now have a few, and then you can view, find view by ID. ID is called custom large. And that, then that's the text view. TV one. You have to cast it and set the text. Text and the text is uh, yeah. I have to get the the item the item for the position. So that's string. So, so basically, that's the that same thing as the array adapter is already doing for us. Sorry, uh, short interruption. Pizza break. Okay, break. <coughs> so, <coughs> welcome back to the second part of the Android Development 101. Um, workshop. We have already um, covered a few uh, views. So we have been at the list uh, and, <coughs> and uh, okay. okay, it's not that's horrible to read. Um, the <coughs> basically uh, what I this slide should tell you is that there are some um, some ac icons already available to download for the for the action bar. If you want need um, the sample, for instance, the refresh icon, the, the, the upload icon, or the delete icon, you can download the. This, the icons from here and just use it uh, and you can also go to the source code from Android and it's a little bit hidden but basically here in the framework space in, in the core package there are all, all this uh, icons that are used, for instance, uh, I, don't know, I see menu, quantum menu with a camera. Yeah. You can get it here. So you can re reuse them, copy it to your project, your app, and so you can cl um, clone the repository. And there are a few menu icons and there are the for the buttons some uh, backgrounds for the buttons or you can modify the list background and progress bars if you want have your own progress bar you can just use them and use your uh, any paint tool and so that's the one. So basically, you can use them. Um, if you uh, want to modify um, the icons or the backgrounds, basically backgrounds, um, there is a tool called Nine Patch Tool. Draw Nine Patch Tool. 
Um, basically, the drawables that are used in the background of a button, for instance, are, <coughs> are, are stretch able. So the, this tool takes uh, a background like, um, and there is one pixel at the, on each of the four sides. And if you, for instance, here on the left side means that we'll stretch in the height and the width is left on the top. And this is just for heading. So this means text will um, align here in this part. So in this case, there is one pixel with a few more here and here. So this means this part is stretched. So if, if it would, for instance, if this would be white and this would be red, so the red part would be stretched. So this means that is probably too bad. And so it's stretched. And maybe I can show it from in the in the tool limbs. So so okay. So we will take um, Android Workshop. No. First app resource. Where is it? <laughs> okay. So, um, here, so, there's a button, and I have colored the center here. So, basically, so maybe I should uh, make it bigger. No, it's too big. Scale. Okay. So, um, so, for instance, if we, we remove this, so we remove the stretching area, so uh, now we have, for instance, if you want to stretch here, so this part, patches here. This part is stretched. So if I say this more is stretched. So and the same applies here. So green part will stretch. And so it means uh, depending on the size of the button or the, the widget that has the background uh, it will look different. So, so, yeah. Okay. So, um, I have made, used, uh, I have created two, um, Button backgrounds for uh, for uh, an example. I have one button that's green, another water one that's that's right that's red, and the red one has a different. Maybe I can 
has a different area mark, marked with red with maybe we can yeah it's not okay. So um okay and for the for the example I've also created a, a selector because I want to use this background for a button and the button can have uh, a few states uh, the, the most used state is the present state if I press the button the button will get another state and with this kind of selector I can um, define different backgrounds depending on the state. I could also say it's enabled, disabled, um, there's for instance the checked uh, check boxes, they have the state checked or not checked and so I can for instance here say if the, the state of the view is pressed it will use another drawable. So I have two um, backgrounds one for the default and one is on the press state and then so now I have two uh, images that I use as background one selector and then I use the the selector uh, where is it? I have it. Uh, here this demo, I think. No, it's just the wrong fragment. Okay, here. So, I says, I say, the background is the simple button background that I have defined here. So this one, with this button will use this this uh, background selector, and so we can. Um, See this? So, so so okay, that's now where is it? Oh, no wrong. That was the example. So I have now a button here, very ugly, but so it will show that if I press it, the background will change to red. And so that's the two different states. So that's the normal state and that's the press state. Uh, in addition to to the in addition to the background, I also have done the same with the text color of the button. The text color is also a selector, um, but in a the difference is instead of drawables, I have used colors, simple colors, which I have defined. In colors, where are colors? Values. Values, colors. So there's another XML file where you can define colors, just uh, red, green, and blue, like in the web. You can say white is F and black is the zeros and uh, robot green is this uh, color value. So I just use white and black for this selector. So I have this selector uh, and say yeah by default it's just black but if it is pressed then it should be white. So and you can see that on the 
change of the state, there changes the background, the background changes to red, and the color of the text changes to white. So you can easily modify the design, the, the look of the, the button. Um, what I would like to show you more is about the activity lifecycle um, because it's a little bit uh, not easy to understand. Um, usually, if you uh, start an activity, it will call this method and this and this and this and this and this, and this right? uh, but you usually only you override the method on create and um, uh, set the layout of your 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 activity and do most of the basic stuff and all other um, methods are not really necessary but you have to understand that each time um, you, re you rotate your device the activity is going through all the states to here and it's coming back in the other orientation back so you have to uh, prepare yourself that if you rotate your device uh, the on create <coughs> method is called again and you have to re recreate the layout and the whole view and you have to save um, yeah, it's not here. Uh, there's another method that's called where you can uh, save the data and we use it on rebuilding the layout and so we have the recreation on orientation change so we have already seen the connect to the XML layout, listeners and the assignment of use to member variables and maybe we can uh, show it I have this main activity that I, you have seen before with the a button and so on and I have add uh, a method call, um, called the logging method to log the, the on create method and if I so, so if I open the lock, so you should, so, okay, so then we clear it and start it. <coughs> this is main activity, yeah. So, where is it? <laughs> Okay, so main activity starting. So it was started, and if I rotate the emulator, sorry, what is it? Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is just the. Uh, okay. No. No. Okay. Okay. That's not possible. Okay. <laughs> but basically, uh, we'll um, recreate the whole thing and in order to uh, to maintain the, the state between orientation changes um, there is a method or was a method it's not deprecated but you can still use it you can return an object um, that can be anything that you want it's your data your I don't know your information that you have already 
that you are displaying in the fuse and, and after uh, and you can use it in the on create method so you can uh, get say get last non configuration instance and you get the string that you have stored before so the object is um, saved by the system and it will get to you back on on restoring the activity on create uh, so it's not necessary to uh, to do this the, uh, the, the heavy work again you have to just save it uh, you could on you could also do uh, on save instance state you could write some um, information here in this bundle bundle are just key values there so you could say put string so you could put some key value in here and in the on restore instance you can use this and say saved state get string with the key and say yeah the I don't know what's, what's what I have now the, the edit you could say string value edit set text value so basically I I would store information and get it here again so that's called after the on create method and I can fill the fields again with the, the information that was in the fuse but if you just uh, use the same uh, layout the, and the, the system will do it for you so it will uh, fill in the same values so but if you have more complex data like you have um, retrieved some JSON files or something then you probably want to store that here um, another important part are the communication between two activities um, there is a method to call another activity in your same uh, app you just say um, start activity and you create an intent where you say oh yeah this class this class st please start this class and I have done this here as example start the activity and I say yeah from here I'm this and I want to start the my class my list activity and so that just starts the other activity so that's basically when I press the button that other activity is called and if I press the back button it's going back so it works without any further uh, code uh, in addition that's within the, your own uh, app but you can also um, do some more abstract intent calling so if you want to uh, open the browser just say start activity but the, the intent is action view so there are a few uh, predefined um, intent actions so few means you want to display something yeah and there's this worthy URI pass method that will uh, create a uh, uh, Android specific uh, URL for you and you just um, have to fill in the web URL HTTP or HTTPS 
and it will open a browser. So that's all that's necessary to open uh, a, a URL with a browser. Uh, usually the system will offer um, all available um, uh, applications. For instance, if you have installed the Chrome browser, in addition to the ordinary browser, it will say, want to, do you want to open the, with this, with the internet, or with the Chrome? And the same, um, you can do the same with the dialer. So you can, if, if the URL looks like tel, T E L dot, dot point, column, and the telephone number, then it will open the dialer. If, it's, if you configure the email, I have some code to show you. There is an email example. Where was it? Is it here? Yeah. <coughs> For instance, we want to set let the user okay. So basically um, there is another action type <coughs> send, so you want to send something, and you say I would have this extra fields, to, and that's extra email, so there is my email address, and I add some other extras to subject, so that's the item that I have selected, and then I set text message, that's the mind type of the internet mind type, and start activity, and in addition, I say internet create chooser, so it will create this system dependent, it depends either it's a list or the new ice cream sandwich, I think there is a, there are icons now, two column icon layouts where you can say, oh yeah, I want use Gmail, I want to use my email app, or I want to use, depending on the fields, you can also have SMS or text, or text messages. Um, so, basically, um, you can also start a start barcode scanner or any app that you know how to um, uh, how to uh, direct the message. So, and what you also can do is uh, start other activities and get notified when a result is this way. Yeah. Okay, what should you mean? Yeah. If you want to uh, get a result, you start another activity and say, yeah, yeah, please uh, collect some information and you, uh, you basically basically start the activity with you say, say it's called start activity from result and you add just an integer usually you use a constant but it doesn't matter really the only important part is that you know this so you say intent and the intent is whatever and and later you say on activity result and and if the request code that's the your request code that is 567 so i've called this intent and the other activity said something like set result so and result code could be result okay so uh, that's that's not here but in the other activity in the other activity says result and and so the the activity finishes the other and could say could have said that the result is okay 
or any other kind of information there are. And so I can check if result code code is solved. Okay. Then maybe there should maybe there's data within and I can say get I don't know int extra so you get the idea you can uh, start the other, another activity with a request code and so when the, the activity finishes it says re result and the result and in addition to the result you can also add some extra information here so here's the the data, so it would say data, whatever, some I don't know, strings or URLs, whatever, and in the on activity result, you can access this data and work with that. So. Um, this is also used if you uh, want to um, integrate in-app purchase and in-app billing. There's also you will also get results if the the payment has finished. Then you will get this kind of information. So the system will call you and say the request uh, code is you have defined, and the answer is either was successful or was not successful, maybe. So, um, there is also the, you can define filters. You can say, I am responsible for this kind of intent. So, you can um, define this either in the, you can say in the XM, usually do it in the, here. The most famous intent filter is the filter for Show, show the activity on the launcher. So if you add this filter, the, the system will show you the icon on the on your start, start screen or the, the launcher basically. Is. So it means that if here I have this, that, that's the main activity here. Because I have it, I have this filter. So if I would, for instance, add this filter to this activity in addition, so then second. So, so I I would also be able to. Uh, see this one so if I okay uh, I've done something yeah okay whoops okay go okay it's running. So I start the activity on the launcher. So, okay. And there is another second. So that's the second. The, what was it? The list activity. So that's the my list activity and so I could also start this activity and I will get the list so so this filter just means that uh, uh, is th that uh, this activity would re can react on the on the main launcher oh, main launcher you could also define your own kind of filter for your own messages to to uh, if you want to 
react on you know handling something like uh, incoming text messages you just define that you want get notified if there is a, a new message then that your activity is called uh, probably more service or something else. but basically you just want to handle some kind of events and uh, to the okay to get to the end um, I would like also just show you the, some fragment stuff um, fragments uh, are new in 3.0 um, they are basically um, a kind of kind of organizing your views so you can um, have independent views with the and they would communicate with each other. For instance, um, here you can have two activities, one, two, and they have um, content, but you can also use the same content in one activity. So you are flexible, and I'd like to show you um, how to use them. It's important to know that you cannot embed fragments in another fragment, so you cannot really do some fragments in fragments. You have to be really carefully to design it like that, so that's one fragment is in an activity, but you can, you can uh, say there's a fragment, there's a fragment, and so on, but you cannot say in this fragment there's another fragment and that would be not work, would not work. Um, so, and what's very um, nice is that um, there are transactions and changes can be added to the stack, back stack, back stack. So that means that if you change something, you can replace this fragment and. So if it's in a webinar transaction and you press the back button, it will redo the the the, the action. <coughs> so I have created for as an example for this uh, an, an activity. So I have a, a show fragment activity, which basically um, has one activity in it. So I have here the, the layout. It's just a frame layout, it's suggested to use the frame layout as a placeholder for a fragment. So basically that's a <coughs> uh, one layout that we want to uh, fill with a fragment. So I have created three fragments. I have a fragment A, B and C. And I want to, to start with the A. So I in my activity, I say on create, okay. It's basically uh, how to create a transaction. I say, yeah, I want this fragment manager and I want to begin the transaction and commit it. And I want to add in this container the fragment. So basically, I see uh, in. Um, where is it? Ooh. So, oh, no, here. Yeah. So that's the example. And the, okay, no. The, and the A fragment is a button, a big button that is, so. Okay, good. So, um, uh, okay, so that's a, just a button, and on click on this button, I will change to the the second fragment. So 
I just have here a, a, some kind of callback to the activity. So I will call the method on the activity and say uh, change to state B. And I do basically the same. I have a transaction and replace the content with the new fragment. And so it should Okay, so that's the fragment activity and that's fragment A. So fragment A, you have already seen that with this layout, that's um, fragment A. So there's a button with the selectors. So that's that. And if I click the button, then I have to replace the content with the fragment B. So here is B, which is just a uh, one text view. So, and if I go back, just press the back button, I'm back. So that basically like this and back. Okay, yeah, that was and. So you could, for instance, uh, uh, define here uh, another fragment. For instance, if you want to have uh, another layout for tablets, you just say um, the same. You can say, OK, activity show fragment. There is a layout for that, but only if I have at least 600 um, device independent pixels. So it means I have a, a tablet, probably. Well, yeah. So, so, and I could just use this and say, Yeah, I have to use the same keys. But, okay, now that's improvised, so I don't know how to. What would I change here? Maybe I have, I don't know, how it's Just, I don't know, add another text view or something like that. So. So I add this, and yeah. So um, I could, for instance, add two fragments. Two. So as as an example, I could uh, replace the few with just one fragment to another. I says I could create this kind of um, layout by just say, uh, I'd use a, a linear layout, for instance, that's horizontal, for instance, and in this horizontal fragment, I put two uh, layouts, frame layout, so, so, and so yeah, that's the here, and so I have to do a, a lot of stuff to to lay out it correctly. But you can then say, oh yeah, here I add the the old one, but in addition I add the second fragment already here, so I could see both fragments at one time. So. And another thing I want to show you is, yeah, this is the late, um, the uh, um, dialogues. Uh, dialogues. Okay, dialogue. Um, there was an old method, um, show dialogue. You, so you called the method show dialogue with a uh, an identifier, an integer, and you had to uh, override the method on create dialog and retur return the dialog that you have uh, want to show. It's 
that was done this way because the activity had to recreate the dialog for you if the rotation has changed. So, so you just had to return the dialog and the activity um, takes care of that, that the dialog is recreated. But the new method, starting with the fragments, uh, is to use, um, you create your own class, extend from the base class dialog fragment, and then um, you call the, the show method of the class and give him the reference to the fragment manager. So basically, that's, uh, I can show you, that's fragment C. So if I want to have a dialog that shows something, um, I just um, create the dialog fragment. In contrast to an activity, I have to um, override the onCreateView method, where I um, just create the view. And here is a very basic example, just one text view with, um, with a text. So basically, I um, want to show the dialog with this uh, content. And so I have um, made a menu item. So here, if I go back, and I press the menu button. Oh, is it this one? No, yeah, it's here. I have here the menu. And I can then show dialog. And in the background, if the, the menu is called, then um, I just create the fragment and say, oh, fragment show um, with the fragment manager. And there's one difference. Uh, there's fragments are only um, available starting from three from Honeycomb, 3.0. But if you want to use it on uh, all the systems, you have to use the support library. You just add the library uh, to the, the lips directory, it's here, and you have to um, extend from the fragment activity, so you say, oh yeah, use the old fragment activity, <coughs> or the new fragment activity, so just use always the Android support version 4 um, classes, and instead of just calling get fragment managers say get support fragment manager and it works the same. So there is a fragment manager and if you are uh, yeah it's basically the same and so here the dialogue show will just open the this fragment as a dialogue. So if I go back and click to there so it's, that's a fragment. So the fragment is just a, a text view uh, in a dialogue. Yeah, it has no title and looks ugly. But you could also use this uh, fragment now within your uh, your activity. For instance, you could just replace um, the the one for when we pressed the the button before. I say, oh yeah, no, it's not fragment B, it's fragment C, okay? Mm -hmm. So we just say, okay, I don't want to see the the uh, one um, the one we had before here, the here in fragment B, no. We just want to uh, see the fragment C now in, in uh, when I press here. And the instead of the dialog, I can see the fragment in the activity. So I can replace that. I can decide afterwards to display the fragment as a dialog or I can put it in a, within an activity. So that's a very flexible way to organize the, the layout and to have some binding code within your fragment that uh, is encapsulated. Um, so 
let's see if I have to add something more. Okay, um, a last few words to persistence. What I have not covered is uh, you can store your data in SQL databases. Um, not covered here in detail. Basically, you're just writing SQL statements. So it's not really um, something that you uh, are used to. Um, if you are familiar with Hibernate or something, you, ha you don't have that. You just write insert statements, select statements. You can use uh, new libraries like Green DAO DAO that um, offer some kind of object um, rational modeling, something like that. But if you're just uh, on the pure Android platform, you cannot uh, you uh, down to uh, SQL statements. Um, there's if you want to save some simple information, use the shared preferences store. It's just a simple key value store where you can put very easily uh, information. I have done this in a, here, for instance, if I want to save uh, the string that I've selected, I just say, just say get the shared preferences with the main so it will create the main file in the data directory, private, only accessible for me, and I did start editing, put the string in the value in the key, the value in the key selection, and commit it. So it will save the file and for you. So that's very easy to use if you don't require a um, rela relational database. Um, so you can also uh, open and write files. So you can either ex ex um, access the external um, SD card or the internal. You can get uh, very easy access to a file within your private directory and you can store data there. And apps often get the data from the internet, so you can use web services. So access web services with uh, ordinary Java I/O methods. You just say URL, open, op open URL, get input stream, get output stream, and that's very. Uh, very common for a Java developer to use Java I.O. I think that's not a big deal. So, shortcuts. Um, so, I've, you can use the code completion that will help you also here, very good. And you can um, extract text from, uh, from the layout. So, usually to uh, use internationalization, um, the strings are stored in a strings XML, so you have resources. Um, so and you can afterwards translate, create um, uh, translation by just create a file, for instance, strings that is store stored in where is the language? And I say okay. Uh, German, okay. So I could just copy and paste that, and oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so and so basically, as the system, if the device is configured for German language, it will automatically use this uh, strings. So that's basically, and as you can see, for instance, there are also some other modifiers. That means that it's version um, 14, 
which means it's uh, starting from ice cream sandwich. And this is 11, which means honeycomb. Or we have already seen that we have the layout modifiers, and you could also combine them. And, and there's a list about this and the priorities and so. But basically, um, as I already told you, that withdrawables usually use the, the density, the layouts have the, the size of the screen, the values probably languages or versions um, or whatever. Or, or you could also use here values with here and say some settings are different. So you can also say I want to have an integer should have the value of one and in default and if it is with a big screen, then you say values and set the integer here to another value. So if you are running on a tablet now, you can um, get this information. Whatever. I mean, if it is an integer, a string, or any reference. So, um, so yeah. And you can format the layout files now easily, so that's very handy if you, uh, you can always format that, that works now. So if you just here, so you get a very compact view of the, so, okay, so that's probably it. You can clone, I will post the, the link to the git repo, JIT re repository. Um, so I've shown you the basic layouts, a list, the email intent, um, I have shown you the fragments, the menus, some selectors, and the dialog. So that's basically all the stuff. So, uh, questions? So that's basically. And, yeah. Sorry, no, I, what methods do you usually use to communicate between fragments? Between or fragments or activities? Activities, sorry. Activities. Um, Okay, yeah, that's a good question. I should cover that. Um, you can add um, in the call to the, you can, where is it? There is that example where we call the start activity. And there is the intent here. And the intent can uh, have some extra information. So you can say put extra and you say value. I don't know. User that's probably a constant in the my my list activity. So I said uh, start with I don't know key and put I don't know string value. Yeah value. It's okay. So so here the, we just add some information to the intent, some extra information, and on create you just say, okay, so there is a value, and say, okay, get this intent, and get the string extra, which was, what was it, key, okay, so key, and so now I have the key. So I have to, from the, I have the value here uh, transferred to the other activity. And now I can change my behavior depending on the key and pre-select some item, for instance. 
And there's another method to communicate uh, between, um, okay, then there's the same, similar uh, me me mm, mechanism to uh, use with fragments. So if you want to communicate from an start with a fragment, you um, say, that, for instance, that's the fragment, the dialogue here is a fragment, and you said <coughs> set arguments, and the, the arguments are a bundle, the same, it's a key values store bundle B, and, and you said B, and B, and put extra, put string, string here. So the same, say key value. You can use uh, uh, all primitive types or a serializable object or, uh, yeah, there are a lot of kind of, can, yeah, array, arrays, yeah. And you accept, you, um, you access the same, similar get argument arguments and get extra string extra yeah so you, you always put some kind of bundle key values in it and so you communicate um, yeah and you can also um, communicate between two frag fragments so um, if you want to um, communicate with another fragment it's possible that, um, for instance, that, uh, no, where is it? Oh yeah, you can say this dialog has set target fragment. So, okay, so you can add a, a target fragment and say, okay, yeah, please communicate with this fragment and so the fragment can then say oh yeah get me the target fragment and call a method so do a class cast cast the class to the, to the specific one and so yeah there are a lot of options and you also can for instance communicate from the fragment usually to the activity as it is suggested by Google to, um, to create a kind of interface so that uh, the fragment does not need to know about the activity, which kind of activity, so you could place the fragment in another activity and it just has to, to implement this interface and you just say, oh, get activity, cast it to this interface and call the method on this. So, and so you can get called back to the activity that the activity is running in and then do the stuff that you want to do. Isn't it possible to, to use an asset trigger for this? Or did it seem to remember something like uh, You want to, uh, what, which kind of messaging between? One activity sends a message to another activity just to update it. Oh yeah, you can also do that. Uh, that's called, you can either do it you can also send some broadcasts, which I have not covered. So um, broadcasts, you can say like uh, you send broadcasts, for instance, send broadcast. So that's kind of send it to all, and you, set, you uh, create an intent, and you can. Uh, I mean, that would be for every activity can listen on it and you can just say um, on resume for instance register for it so uh, that's the me method when the, the activity is uh, really uh, alive then you can say register I think register for receiver no, yeah I think something like that yep that's what so basically you register a filter that will Receive this, and you can get the, the message called when the same is called. So that's basically it. Or is there another method for directly 
one active to the other active no. Uh, but and what's not covered is to call between threads. So you can also start the thread, or the async task is called kind of um, convenient method to uh, to uh, do some heavy background processing and then uh, when the task has finished because uh, this you have to do all UI stuff in, on the main thread so m most uh, UI uh, systems are, are designed for that for that that uh, all access to views and so have to be on the main thread and so the async task helps you to get your own on post ex um, post execute no it's execute no, it's a pre execute post 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 execute uh, where you can be sure that it's called on the on the main thread again so that's very okay Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Um, all, all other questions, you can direct to Michael later, please. Um, we st we, because we're a little bit over time now, thank you very much. Um, we have 15 more minutes until the next session starts.